This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We turn now to the case of Albert Woodfox, who has been in solitary confinement for 40 years. That's right, 40 years. Most of that time locked up in the notorious maximum security Louisiana State Penitentiary known as Angola. This week, after his lawyers spent six years arguing that racial bias tainted the grand jury selection and Woodfox's prosecution, federal judge James Brady agreed. This is the third time his conviction has been overturned. Nevertheless, Woodfox remains imprisoned. Those close to the case expect the state of Louisiana, under the direction of Attorney General James Buddy Caldwell, to appeal again, as the state has successfully done in the past, seeking to keep Woodfox in solitary confinement in conditions that Amnesty International describes as cruel, inhuman, and degrading. Albert Woodfox is one of the Angola Three. Angola, the sprawling prison complex with 5,000 prisoners and 1,800 employees, is in rural Louisiana on the site of a former slave plantation, getting its name from the African country of origin of many of those slaves. It still exists as a forced labor camp. Woodfox and fellow prisoner Herman Wallace were in Angola for lesser crimes when implicated in the prison murder of a guard in 1972. Woodfox and Wallace founded the Angola chapter of the Black Panther Party in 71 and were engaged in organizing against segregation, inhumane working conditions, systematic rape and sexual slavery inflicted on many imprisoned in uh, and Angola. This is a clip of Albert Woodfox speaking in his own words on a prison payphone in the new documentary In the Land of the Free. If a cause is noble enough, you can carry the weight of the world on your children. And I thought that my cause then and now was noble. So therefore, they could never break me. They might bend me a little bit. They may cause me a lot of pain. They may even take my life. But they will never be able to break me. Albert Woodfox in prison. For more on this major new development in Albert Woodfox's case, we're joined by Robert King, the only freed member of the so-called Angola Three. Uh, Robert King spent 29 years in solitary confinement for a murder he did not commit. He was released in 2001 after his conviction was overturned. He's written a book about his own experience called From the Bottom of the Heap, the autobiography of Black Panther Robert Hillary King. He's featured in several films from the Angola Three, Black Panthers and the Last Slave Plantation, to a brand new film about his life called Hard Time. Robert King, welcome back to Democracy Now! Can you talk about the significance of uh, the judge ruling, now for the third time, overturning the conviction of Albert Woodfox and saying he should be free. Yes. Uh, thank you, Amy. Um, I would like to speak on the significance of the ruling. Uh, the ruling indicates um, that, as been pointed out, this case has been overturned uh, three times, two times by a federal judge and by Brady, himself, Judge Brady, and once by the state. And the significance is that there was a flawed conviction um, that uh, the courts feel is uh, both state and federal. And as a result of this, uh, you, you, you see this replication of, of, of his case being overturned by different judges at, at different times. And the significance at this time, hopefully, is that um, this is after actually it's, it's going on 41 years. April 17 will be 41 years. Um, uh, and we're hoping that uh, this will be the end of of, of this um, harassment by the uh, state of Louisiana with regards to um, Herman and Albert, uh, especially Albert Woodfox in this case here. Uh, and Walima Johnson, I'd, I'd like to bring you in and also if you could talk about... Oh, I'm sorry, we don't, we don't have him uh, uh, ready yet. Uh, well, can, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Well, the, the nearest uh, town to Angola is St. Francisville. That's where Albert Woodfox and Herman Wallace were committed for trial by a grand jury in May of 1972. At the time, the local population was still grieving the murder of prison guard Brent Miller. This is a clip from the documentary In the Land of the Free of Herman Wallace's sister, Vicki Wallace, describing that moment. We went to court. That's when Harma asked the judge, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. He said, where the black people is? I was curious myself. It was all white jury. Not one black person was on it. 
So the judge told him, get him out of here. Get him out. I stood up, I said, listen at this. And Harmon, when he was pulling him, he, he had his hand, peace and power. He said, take care of it, I said, okay. Now, I want to play a clip of, as well of Teeny Verrett, the widow of the murdered prison guard. She was just 17 when her husband, Brent Miller, was stabbed to death in 1972. Uh, this is uh, Teeny Verrett from the documentary In the Land of the Free. I've been living this for 36 years. There's not a year that goes by that I don't have to relive this. And it just keeps going and going. And then these men... I mean, if they did not do this, and I believe that they didn't, they have been living a nightmare for 36 years. And I think we now have Walimu Johnson, a longtime member of the Angola Three support team and the International Coalition to Free the Angola Three. Oh, welcome to Democracy Now! And I'd like to ask you first uh, your reaction to the, uh, the, uh, the, the court decision, and also if you could tell us a little bit about the specifics as to why the judge uh, decided to overturn uh, the, uh, the conviction again. Well, my immediate reaction was not one of surprise, because for years, Federal Judge Brady in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, made it clear that he intended to respect the law and the state has opposed everything that the defense has presented in spite of the fact that there's no tangible evidence to connect these men with the murder and the attorney general of louisiana has taken this personally and he's concerned about his political career so i expect some type of reaction from his office whatever that might be hopefully it won't take long to correct the problem but the legal aspect of it is that Initially, the state claimed that the jury foreman had been picked in accordance with law. There was no racial discrimination. But all the evidence and documentation clearly reflects that there was, in fact, racial discrimination involved in selecting the jury foreperson. And the state brought in statisticians during the evidentiary hearing, and the defense brought in expert statisticians and others in response to the state. And evidently, George Brady accepted the defense's argument because he did give a favorable ruling, which, as King stated, was the third favorable ruling that Albert Woodfox has received. This is the third time that his conviction has been reversed. So it's clear that it's not a question of law. It's a question of who can sway the general public, and we're in a racist society in general, and particularly here in the judicial system in Louisiana. So this was more or less tantamount to a legal lynching. I want to play a clip of Albert Woodfox speaking from prison on a telephone line. This is a recording that was also featured in the documentary in the Land of the Free. Our primary objective is that country. That is what we are struggling for, and we are actually fighting for our freedom. This call originates from a Louisiana correctional facility and may be recorded or monitored. That we were framed for murder, that we are totally and completely in action with anything. You have 15 seconds left on this call. Let me call you back. That was Albert Woodfox in prison. He's been in solitary for nearly 40 years. Three times the case has, his case has been overturned, but he remains in prison. Robert King, the previous attorney general of Louisiana, was the prosecutor in the case. Is that right? How is it possible that um, Albert Woodfox and, uh, actually, Herman Wallace, two of the Angola Three, or the third, um, have spent almost 40 years uh, in solitary. You were there for, what, almost 30 years. Describe what it's like. Well, it, it being in solitary confinement um, is, I mean, it's, it's dehumanizing. It is awesome. It is awful. You're locked in the cell 23 hours a day, sometimes 24. Uh, you're in a six by nine by twelve. That was my ex my experience. Uh, everywhere you went, you went shackled. You were handcuffed. 
Um, of course, the the law may have decreed, uh, the coach may have decreed, or the administration may have decreed that you get an hour uh, on the till. Uh, this wasn't set in stone. A lot of time, you did not even get an hour out of yourself. You was there in yourself for 24 hours because if they declared a security day, they wanted to come through and shake down and harass a lot of people. They came through and they just. Um, Abolished the, that day for for yard or for the any, anyone taking a shower. So it was, it was. You was in the cell. You was fed. You know, uh, under a door. You, you know, there were food slots. They would put the food in the slots. Sometimes they would steal. Uh, and we had a uh, 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 protest against their putting our food uh, trays on the floor, and they cut the slots. But nevertheless, sometimes they would still come by even after the slots were cut. So you live in an environment that considered you subhuman. Uh, uh, you were in Angola at that time, and you were considered the voice of the voice, despite the fact that uh, all evidence of the fact that you were there legally, or the fact that there were other evidence that may point that, uh, to your innocence, it doesn't matter. You are treated like you are uh, inhuman, and you are treated like a slave uh, in Angola, and especially if you were in solitary confinement. So solitary confinement was not a beautiful thing. At, at, at all, I saw people come in, in in that environment, you know, openly outspoken, and I saw them after a few moments they become subdued, they withdraw themselves, they go into some type of regression, and then they are subjected to the worst of the worst, uh, because then there is a misinterpretation of, of what is happening with with this particular prison that this prisoner need to be uh, uh, doped up with some type of psychotropic atrophic drugs and this is what this is what is happening uh, a lot of people in in, in that uh, end up in solitary confinement also um, end up um, in a, on the psychiatric ward uh, in Angola or some other institution that they might send them to um. Robert King, uh, you all three were members of the Black Panther Party. It wasn't a year later that um, uh, Wallace and Wood Fox were convicted of killing a prison guard. You hear Eni T even Teeny Verrett, the widow of the guard, questioning whether, in fact, they were guilty. The significance of what you did within the prison, the organizing as a Black Panther. Well, we think this because, you know, I— uh, I entered the prison, you know, some months after uh, Herman and Albert, and they placed me in uh, solitary confinement, uh, the same uh, area in which they had placed uh, Albert and, and Herman. And we felt the need uh, to organize because, after all, well, we had considered ourselves victims, uh, not helpless victims, but we were victims. and. Uh, we understood that the reason why we were being prosecuted or persecuted, and I know this is the reason why I was being placed in the cell, because I was a member of the Black Panther Party. So I think it was incumbent upon us to try to change some of the, the strategy and the tactics of the state uh, in which they utilize uh, rules and means and the legal means to uh, further dehumanize people. So we engaged in a, some protests. We, we just, uh, tried to— um, educate uh, some of our former uh, um, prisoners um, about what was going on. And it was, again, incumbent upon us to, 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 to not see ourselves, to see ourselves as victim, but not helpless victims. Uh, we wanted to do something about this, and this is why we established uh, the teaching that we did. Um, and this is why I joined Herman and Albert. Robert King, I want to thank you for being with us. And Walimu Johnson, thank you. Uh, Robert King from Austin, Walimu Johnson from New Orleans. That does it for our broadcast. Again, Albert Wood Fox conviction has been overturned for the third time. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.